Markets are taking a hit. All markets, not just the gold markets. Equities, too, as yields continue to rise. The 10-year is now above 1.5%. The dollar is up as a result. And Peter Hug, Global Trading Director of Kitco Metals, is here to discuss this today. Peter, welcome back. Volatile markets this week, much more than last week. How are you reading it? Well, <laughs> I mean, when we spoke last Friday, we, uh, you know, I indicated that I thought gold had a good shot of getting over 1800 where I saw a little resistance and possibly test 1820. Uh, it sure looked good on Monday. It got up to 1817. Uh, but then the, uh, you know, that 10 year bond yield continues to rise, uh, putting, uh, putting pressure, uh, uh, on both the equity markets and the commodity markets, it's uh, taken the edge off uh, a dollar that was headed lower at the beginning of the week. Uh, and with the stock market selling off both Wednesday, yesterday, and uh, down some 400 points now, 300 points right now as we speak, uh, there's just been a move to cash and uh, there's been a selling of risk assets. Uh, mm -hmm. To be perfectly frank with you, I'm surprised uh, gold didn't once it got through 1750 this morning, which didn't seem to be a, a, an issue for it, uh, I was surprised that it, uh, it, it's not holding the 1725 level, which I consider mm -hmm. pretty significant support. Now, it's still early. It may close above it. Uh, I always base my, uh, my technicals on close. Uh, so we'll see how this market finishes off during the day. But right now, the technicals look uh, terrible for gold. And if we can't get over that 1725, uh, there may be some selling into the Asian market on Sunday night. And we may see a test of 1700 early next week. Right. Okay, so that's a that's a that's a very good point, Peter. It's down forty eight bucks right now as we speak. Do you think gold is down primarily because of the sell off and risk assets? Usually, when risk assets sell off, people immediately sell gold as well to raise cash. Or do you think gold is down because of the strength of the dollar? Which do you think is more likely? Well, you know, I mean, from a strength of a dollar perspective, I mean, the dollar is stronger than it started off at, uh, the week, but it, it's not materially stronger. Uh, you know, the uh, the euro uh, opened the week at uh, just just north of uh, 122 uh, to the dollar, and it's now just under 121. Uh, the yen's down about uh, 2%. Uh, but where my focus is, uh, when I look at the commodity uh, pictures, I, I my currency of choice to watch uh, is the Canadian dollar. And at the beginning of the week, the Canadian dollar, right through uh, yesterday morning, was trading at about 125, uh, which was the high for the past year. And uh, this morning it's at 127. So the Canadian dollars lost almost 2% just uh, just in 24 hours. And uh, so I sort of correlate uh, where I see the metals based on the value of the Canadian dollar. As the Canadian dollar has strengthened, uh, it tends to mirror the rise in commodity prices. Uh, mm -hmm. And when the Canadian dollar uh, takes a hit, you generally see some weakness in commodity prices. You've got oil down almost $1, dollar, uh, dollar uh, thirty today, uh, although it's had a significant run over the past four or five days. Uh, and uh, and you're seeing um, selling both in gold and silver. Now, yesterday, silver held up at the 2750 level as gold broke down below 1800 uh, on Tuesday. Uh, silver was still holding fairly well, and so was platinum. But eventually, uh, silver just uh, uh, succumbed to the pressure, and uh, as gold uh, broke through that 1775 level early this morning, uh, and then through 1750, uh, 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 selling came into the silver market as well, and uh, we're looking at silver right now in, in the low 26s. Okay. I, I've been speaking to economists about the relationship between yields and gold. As you know, if yields rise, it means the opportunity cost of gold holding gold is also higher, which means gold should go down. I'm looking at the uh, yields over the last year. So yields, the nominal 10-year uh, yield has reached an all-time low last year around uh, the summertime, July, August. That coincides with the all-time high in gold prices. And ever since then, yields have been ticking up. Gold has been ticking down. I wonder mm -hmm. then... If uh, if that really is the sort of the max level of gold price, assuming because yields were pretty much at zero, it couldn't really go much lower than that. And so would that just would that indicate the ceiling for the gold price for you? If if let's say yield the the ten year yield is at zero point two five percent under under zero point five percent, and the maximum um, uh, price for gold is twenty one hundred dollars, would that be the max price for gold? 
No, I don't think you can make that correlation. Uh, okay. you know, I think yields of, uh, the, the rise in yields has, has been a, a recently uh, new uh, phenomenon in the sense that, uh, you know, it's basically just sort of been progressing over the past four to six weeks. Uh, you know, this wasn't uh, th this wasn't something that was taking uh, that had any uh, legs to it uh, near the end of uh, 2020. Uh, you know, I think what the perception is is that the economy looks like it may be getting better uh, with the yes. uh, with the virus, and uh, it, you know, there's just some pressure on 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 yields because of that. I think it's premature. And, you know, I don't think the Fed's going to take any action yet, but I can tell you if that Dow drops below 30 and and, and starts to run into some serious trouble, uh, I, I think the Fed steps in here. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I'm having trouble understanding this drop. Uh, I can understand the concept of moving away from uh, from some risk assets and raising cash, uh, uh, but I think the macro picture is still uh, uh, very positive for the commodity uh, commodity index in general. And uh, you know, I think gold at seventeen twenty um, continues to look attractive to me. Right. So it's not just gold that's down today. Silver, palladium, platinum—it's all down. Uh, same metric, same forces driving those prices down as well. Well, I mean, if you look at silver, it's down, but, you know, we're still, uh, you know, sort of in right now it's trading at around 2640. Uh, you know, when silver got to a high of 29 when gold was at, uh, you know, $2,200 and, you know, silver's down $3, which is approximately 10 percent and gold's yeah. down $500, give or take uh, from the high. So, uh, you know, I still think that there is interest in silver uh, at these levels. And and I certainly think uh, platinum south of $1,200 uh, is an opportunity to buy. I do not think that the trend in the industrial metals uh, from the upside is, is over by a long shot. Right. Okay. So let's talk about uh, very quickly the equities markets. You mentioned that should the equities market, the Dow, drop even more, the Fed might step in to intervene. Why, why would the central bank intervene on lower equities prices, Peter? Well, you know, it, it's basically fear. Uh, I mean, every time this, uh, there's an issue with the economy, the first place it shows is in the equity market. And it, it, it's just sort of a barometer that the Fed looks at. I mean, it it, it, it basically is, is a bastion of, of, of wealth and liquidity. And you know, if that starts getting uh, getting hit and 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 dropping significantly, uh, I mean, there are a lot of people affected by it, not just the rich. I mean, people that uh, you know that have four hundred one ks, pension plans. Uh, I, I mean, it affects the economy overall, and eventually it, uh, it it creates fear and it scares people from spending. Uh, yeah. They get nervous, and uh, so the Fed steps in and tries to mitigate that uh, that angst by creating some liquidity to support, uh, you know, one of the markets that that uh, that maintains a, a significant um, allocation of wealth for the American people. Well, what what could they do? The Fed funds rate is already, you know, very low, near zero. What else well, could they, they do? Funds rate, but uh, you know they could they could do more uh, in their bond purchases. Uh, I mean, the Fed has a number of tools out uh, that uh, can uh, uh, that can create liquidity for the market. They could intervene against the dollar. Sure. Uh, you know, there's a number of things the central bank can do if, if they think that it's starting to get out of hand. And I and I think it's premature. I don't think it's getting out of hand yet. Again, the, the, the Fed's looking at this and saying, well, the Dow's still at 31 too. Yeah, um, you know that's not bad. It's you know it's not trading at eighteen thousand. Sure. Uh, but, but but again, you know, uh, investors, especially traders in the gold market, have been looking for a catalyst to bring this market higher, and they just haven't got it. And uh, you know, eventually, uh, sometimes you just sort of get bored with it, and uh, you're seeing other asset classes that might be doing better. And uh, you know you liquidate uh, uh, you liquidate your investment and you and you move into other things. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't, but uh, I, I think you're seeing that type of um, action in the market, and you're also seeing computer selling. I mean, again, seventeen sort of seventy five ish was around the two hundred day moving average. Once we lost that, uh, there was nothing but sort of air until seventeen fifty. Um, got through that relatively easy. Uh, I would have expected again, and I still hope to see gold close above 1725. 
that that 1725 level uh, will hold. Um, but again, it's all technical selling and you've got computer uh, algorithms that are indicating uh, the momentum is down. Um, so it just sort of feeds on itself. Uh, from a chart perspective, if we lose uh, 1725, I mean, I think there'll be some support psychologically at 1700. But the next main target I'd be looking at would be the 1680-85 level as uh, a significant support. All right. Okay. Well, that's, um, let's talk about the relationship between equities and gold now, because uh, like you said, if the Fed intervenes on uh, lower equities prices, that should be supportive for gold prices as well. Could it not? That uh, action from uh, the Fed? I mean, if, if, if the Fed uh, does something extraordinary, as opposed to what they're doing right now uh, in support of, uh, we'll use the equity market as an example. Yes, it definitely, in my opinion, would be uh, uh, constructive for uh, the uh, for the gold market and and for silver. So, so yeah, it just occurs to me that the gold and silver, sorry, the gold and equities markets right now are seeing a positive correlation. Is that uh, is that is that fair to assume? Is that something you considered as a trader? I, I think what happened to this market was uh, I think the market got caught off guard. They did not expect the ten year uh, uh, to, to go north of one fifty on the yield basis. They thought there'd be a, a wall there and it would back down from that. And uh, it doesn't seem to be stopping here yet. Uh, and I, I think that's making people uh, somewhat nervous about the okay. yields. Uh, and the potential short-term strength in the dollar that these yields may cause. And uh, they look like they're trying to jump ahead of the curve and they're, and they're selling gold in anticipation of a stronger dollar. And I think any stronger dollar, I think, will be short-lived. But mm -hmm. again, uh, you know, traders uh, trade based on what they see. And uh, uh, again, once, uh, once they start hitting the button to sell, uh, it, it tends to be a cascading effect once, uh, once the momentum picks up. Okay. You talked about the downside support levels for gold. What about the um, upside resistance levels? Any resistance levels you're eyeing? Well, yeah. I mean, again, uh, this is based on the assumption we get a close at uh, over 1725. But if we don't, then uh, okay. 1725 becomes resistance. Then uh, next significant resistance will now be the 200-day moving average, which is about at 1780. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll need to clear those two hurdles uh before um anybody can talk uh, seriously about a test of 1800 or beyond all right well thank you very much for the update peter it doesn't look like it's uh bright days ahead for gold investors at least for the not for the foreseeable future but um well, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens i mean if investors were looking for a pullback because they missed the move higher uh they're getting their uh they're getting yeah. their opportunity to pull back I, I mean it's all relative it depends where you are Sure. Uh, in the game, uh, yeah, if you're long at 2190, uh, you're obviously not very happy. Uh, uh, but uh, you're you right. I mean, on a, on, a, on a two year basis, gold is still looking, the long term chart for gold is still looking very strong. If you, if you just zoom out and take a look at two to five years, we're, we're still at a very high point. True, again, uh, but if you're a trader, uh, yeah. <laughs> this market is, uh, if you're long, I mean, you could be short and then you're happy, but uh, if you're a trader and you're long yeah. this market, you're not, you're not feeling very good right now. Uh, again, as an investor, uh, again, without, again, the broken record scenario, <laughs> uh, uh, it's part of your portfolio uh, and uh, you make adjustments. Uh, so if sure. uh, it was 10% of your portfolio, and now you have this downdraft. You uh, you recalibrate your portfolio, and if gold's at 8% or 5% because of this drop, uh, then you add to the position in gold uh, to bring it back to 10%. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the way you have to do it as an investor. And if the market rallies and uh, your your position is now not 10 but 14% of your portfolio, you sell 4%. Uh, and you need that discipline whether you're buying gold or Apple stock or uh, or anything else. You just recalibrate your portfolio either every three, minimum every six uh, months. And uh, uh, again, uh, you, you keep your, your weighting where you want it and you add or subtract to that weighting depending on which way the market moves.